Hello, my name is Marcel Petit. Um, I am from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I run Core Neighborhood Youth Co-op. I'm also an artist from Saskatoon. I'm here, delightfully here today, to make bullet soup with you. Um, it's a old Métis recipe, a um, bit of the history behind it. Um, I hope I'm going to be right. If somebody watches this and they go, that's wrong. But I think it started about the 1930s, around there. Um, it's really during the Depression era, the Depression era, when there was not a lot of food going around. We didn't have grocery stores all over the place. Um, and um, people were looking for some good, hearty food to eat. And what was in Saskatchewan at the time, I guess what we can say is that people used, um, a lot of people, I guess at the point, they probably still hunted where they used a lot of wild meat too. But today what I'm going to show you is basically bullet soup for, um, for basically just using water and just really downsizing the ingredients. And this is made for about six, probably soup for about six. You'd need, you need about six or seven potatoes. You cut them, into, cut them into squares. You need some onions. And I'd say about four or five small onions. Six or seven small carrots. You need some pepper, some salt, some flour. I'm going to put some rosemary in the meatballs. And of course, the beef. So I'm going to cut up the onions first and dice them up so we can start the meatballs. Um, and hopefully we don't see we don't see Marcel cut himself. I always like it when people let me use knives and I don't cut myself. That's a good thing. So let's start this off. So the one thing that I could tell you about making this soup, this soup is usually done, and my mom did it for the longest time, is that this was really made for um, made for New Year's. So basically, what because it's simple to make, what they would do is they invite people over on New Year's to, to come and eat, families and friends. And my mom every year would have a bowl of soup on all night on New Year's and whenever somebody would knock on the door she'd wake up at any time of the night whether it's two o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the morning and she wouldn't judge anybody she wouldn't disrespect anybody nobody would just disrespect her but they would come in for a nice bowl of soup and a piece of bag and that was a tradition she kept on for the longest time and and some people use um, wild meat and bones. It really depends on what you want and how you want to cook it and and um, how long, yeah, because some, I think some people will, will do this for like 12 hours and, and, and really steep it in the bones and really steep it in the broth. So it's really up to you on how you want to do this. So you just calculate how much pepper you want. You want a tablespoon, put a tablespoon in. And I'm going to clean my hands here again too before I get too dirty because the flour is going to be fine. So I'm going to put a little bit, a little bit of flour in here. And you can add, and, and, I'll, and I'll say this later, but I'll say too, too, that whatever excess flour you have, you can add it to the soup after too. So a little bit of this. And I've got a bit of water in here too to kind of help too. But if you need to add more water to kind of help, you can too. But it seems that it's working now. And I'm going to use this word. You squish it up as much as you can. So why is it called bullet soup? Well, it's it's bull, it's it's really from the French word um, boulette, and it's it's because of the meatballs. So if I'm saying it right to all my French friends out there, but it's it started off with boulette soup, and some people call it bullet. Um, I like boulette because of the meat, and it's really just that French word boulette. That's that's my that's my good history lesson of the day there. If I'm wrong, people let people write write to Gord. <laughs> if I'm wrong, write to Gord. Let him know. And so we'll start this up again. I'll put the potatoes and the carrots in there. 
it seems that boils. They don't make the meatballs, so we've added pepper, we've added that. I didn't add. If you want to add a little bit of rosemary to, to the flavor, you can. Um, I wonder if I should crush all that. I'm going to just keep full. Add a bit of flavor to that. Mm -hmm. I'll keep the flour up a little bit more. I'm doing a pretty good job. I haven't stabbed myself. Nothing's burning down. I'm going to wait for that to boil. And so I'll put these in now. And then start cooking. And then we'll put the, I don't know if I can use it all because it's a small bowl, right? So again, the, you can just put the you can brown you can brown the, the meatballs if you want. Or you can just put them into the soup and let them cook in there. as much. Um, so it's everything to boil over here. Let's uh, do its thing. Okay. So again, as I was saying, um, bullet soup, or bullet soup, whatever you want to say. We're waiting for our, our water to boil with our carrots and our potatoes. Then we'll put the um, we'll put some of the meatballs in it. Um, it. It was always beautiful and amazing that I I learned this from my mom and her allowing people just to come in at all times of the night on New Year's New Year's Eve, um, whether they they were too happy to be in the house or not. She she wouldn't judge, she wouldn't discriminate. She would just sit down with them and give them a piece of bannock and give them something to eat. And I think a lot of people um, just respected her enough that they, they wouldn't come in to bug her, they would just come and eat and then would leave and have a good conversation. But she taught me a lot about humbleness and gratitude with that because there's a lot of people out there, again as we know, that don't have a lot and, and giving them some place on New Year's Eve, some place warm, some place to eat is, is, a, is an amazing thing to do for another human being. So our water is boiling and I'm going to turn it up just a touch more. And I am going to put our meatballs in. So, one at a time. I'm going to go in nicely. Nobody gets hurt. Oh, these are good. I probably made them a bit too big, but you know what? Then I'm going to add some, some of the flour to it. Mix it up. So here we are, cooking nicely. Um, for flavor, if you want to add a bit more flavor, I added a couple of bay leaves. I added a bit, a bit of rosemary to the soup itself. It's boiling nicely. So we'll give it a few more minutes. The, I, I checked the, the, the potatoes and the carrots, and they're tender already. So it's, it's coming along nicely. So hopefully in the next little shot, we can see actually taste one and, and pour it into the bowls and see what it looks like. There's the hamburgers, look at that. Some of them are falling apart, but it's because I think I cranked them with the spoon. So just let it cook, and it'll come out, it'll come out the way it's supposed to. It's been browned nicely because of the flour, the meatballs, the carrots, and then you can see the rosemary, but it smells, it smells beautiful. Well, I have to say I thank you to, to Chet for allowing me to, to come along for this little journey today. Um, thank you to all my, my, my past relations and forefathers before me that, that cooked this soup. Um, and um, and, and I'm, I'm grateful and I'm humbled that I got to do, share this day with you. And I hope you, when you cook it, you enjoy the soup. Um, of course, yeah. And have fun. I think the whole family can cook it together. And, and, it's, and, it's, and it's really, really good to, to eat.